Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another RL Craft Guide and Tutorial. Today we will be looking at 10 items you probably didn't know existed and are a game changer for everyone. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. Okay, so first off, I'd like to give four honorable mentions. First is the Wrath Pendant. Uh, these pendants will just give you an extra damage boost. Um, as well as a uh, extra damage and armor boost uh, whenever you deal critical hits to your enemies. They also provide extra stats. Uh, in this case, they're pretty horrible. But uh, if you manage to craft one and it has pretty great stats, then I think you'd be all set. The second honorable mention that I like to give are these heart containers because they will increase your max health. As you can see, I have two rows and an extra heart. And that is almost purely just from extra hearts that I've been able to craft. Third honorable mention is going to be this broken heart. So this broken heart uh, won't act exactly as a, as a regular heart. The broken heart will stop you from taking a hit that would normally kill you in one hit. And instead will break one of your heart containers. And you won't be able to use it until you go to bed again. So essentially it's lowering your max health, but I'd much rather have that than die in one hit. The second honorable mention is going to be this workbench or carpentry bench. It doesn't have a lot of uses other than the fact that you can craft several unique items in this game. And that is why it's so much bigger than the regular crafting bench. But yep, so let's get started with our actual top 10 list. Okay, so the number one on our list is going to be this bazaar and it's a bobble slot. And all it does is grants immunity against poison, plus whatever uh, other buffs it'll grant you. But it, I think this peach right here is really useful whenever you're going up against spider dungeons. But other than that, it doesn't particularly have any other uses. This one, for example, will give me extra health and that's about it. But it's, it's number one on our list because it's really easy to obtain, especially from spider dungeons. So it is pretty easy to obtain, like I said, um, and it's low on our list for that reason. And the fact that it's not usable everywhere, like not every monster will poison you, but it's still a pretty good item to have. So summoning staffs are important in general. Uh, I personally have the stable summoning staff but there are other versions. There is the regular summoning staff, which you can get from Ender Pearl Bone and Gold Ingot. So it's very easy to craft, very easy to obtain, and you can make it into these other versions of it, the Blood Summoning Staff, the Sturdy Summoning Staff, and the Savage Summoning Staff. And whichever one you'd like to use is completely up to you, but just having a summoning staff is beneficial, especially when you're raiding dungeons, because like I said in my previous videos, they will tank, uh, the summonings will take some aggro and damage and deal extra damage to enemies for you. It's almost a must whenever you're going raiding. So the third one on the list is going to be this ender staff. So this ender staff doesn't really have many uses, but I think it's a really niche and cool item to have in general. And the reason it's number three is just because it's harder to get than the other two. But if you use it properly, I think it's a great item. So what it does, it just launches a player. So it's just like using an ender pearl. Uh, but it's turned into a staff. I think it is one of the more interesting items in the game, but you can use it to pretty much, you know, travel or get a, out of uh, tight places like caves and such, or just escape enemies. So that is why it is a little bit higher than the other two on the list. So number four on our list is going to be the Scarlight Ring. So this Scarlight Ring will slowly start restoring your health. Um, and this is number four because it is useful just about everywhere in the game, at least anywhere that has PvP combat. And that's just because you're going to take damage without a question. And it's always kind of inconvenient having bandages and uh, salves taking up inventory in your space. And with this, you don't need any of that. Yes, it's going to restore your heart, uh, heart rate slowly, but I would rather have that like pull back a little bit from whatever raid I'm doing or just killing monsters and let my uh, health be restored. You usually need to pull back anyways for uh, water or just to eat. So I think it's beneficial whenever you're taking things kind of slow one step at a time. And who knows, it might save your life later on. And another reason why it's higher up in the tier list, it's because of these Umbrium ingots and the Black Heart. Those are 
harder items to get unless you're just in the right biome. Okay, so number five is one of my absolute favorites and it is going to be this uh, Jagged Stone of the Sea. And what it does, aside from the enchantments that I come with, um, it'll allow you to move very swiftly underwater. So you're pretty much a fish and it will actually give you infinite air whenever you're on your very last bubble. So yes, it'll look scary at first, but it'll just hold it at one bubble which is great. So have you guys ever fought a sea monster and you were able to beat it, but you got stuck very far down below at sea level and you could not get back up in time to make it out? Well, luckily this amulet will be your salvation because not only are you able to move quickly around like you're sprinting in, in water, but you will also be able to breathe infinitely down here with this amulet. And I think it is high tier for sure. And it's not too difficult to craft, which is why it's one of my favorite items because I definitely want to go exploring in the, in the ocean, but I also hate the ocean. So there's that. So in order to craft it, you need one of these glowing ingots, a prismarine crystal, and just some fish. So the, the actual ingots are actually a little bit harder to come by. I was lucky enough to get them from a drop uh, from a rare monster and I had a few of these laying around so I was able to craft it and then the prismarine crystals you can actually just get from mining any uh, sea temple or you can get them from killing smaller dragons not the not the big fire breathing ones but the smaller ones and that is why it's higher up in the tier list so number six uh this one i would say has almost a uh, even match with the last one just because it's not as useful in terms of how you can use it but it is useful everywhere in the game um, so this one will pull xp and items towards you and then whenever you're held it has a chance of stopping arrows in their track so i wish it said missiles or projectiles but it's only arrows so if other monsters have things that will throw at you like for example dragons will throw magma blocks at you and they will blow up it will not stop those it only stops arrows and so this makes it one of those extremely high survivabilities because sometimes you're not paying too much attention and you let a skeleton by and you're not aware that they're aiming at you and if you have this in your hand you you will essentially stop that from hitting you which is extremely extremely beneficial and the pulling towards item and xp it's it's nice but it's not exactly a must unless you're farming one of those really long dungeons and you don't want to get near a spawner or something and all the loot is near that but yeah i think it's uh hand in hand with the uh jagged stone of the sea number seven so number seven are shields in general i know this is kind of lame and kind of dumb like no doubt you should be wearing a shield shields are one of those items that are just crucial to about everything in uh, rl craft like not having a shield and going into combat is probably one of the worst ideas you can have and it's definitely a lifesaver in just about every situation and you can use it just about everywhere. The only time they don't recommend you using it is whenever you're going mining but honestly or building but honestly other than that it's usable just about everywhere and it's not just a shield that I want to shout out it is also this shield in particular. Okay so this shield will grant partial fire resistance and immunity to knockback and most negative status effects when held or equipped in, in bubble slot. So that is three buffs that is extremely extremely important to anywhere in the game so partial fire resistance means whenever you're going up against dragons they won't be able to set you on fire for the most part and immunity knockback whenever you're up against a creeper or an actual dragon and it throws its fireball at you you won't be pushed back as far and you won't catch on fire so that's double amazing and you can also take that against uh, gas and they won't be able to blow you back as easy and, and it says most negative status effects and i'm not sure what all that entails because i am not able to craft one because you need all of this and i guess just depending on where you live you can you're able to do this but honestly i don't i don't have a forbidden fruit and i don't have a mixed color dragon scale and a vitamin the ring of overclocking so it takes a lot it's definitely a grind to get that but once you have it, I guarantee it's going to be absolutely worth it, especially if you combine it with all the other things we've been talking about. So I can't wait to get one myself, but I think that is definitely higher tier. Okay, so 
I think this one could have been ranked lower. Um, and the only reason it's ranked so high is because it's a rare drop from, from monsters. And this is the Stone of Greater Inertia. And what it does is you are completely immune to fall damage and has increased height and increases the speed while sprinting. So this is just sort of a movability thing. You are able to maneuver around dungeons, places, planes, just get anywhere faster. And if you, I don't know, for some reason say you don't see a hall on the ground, a chasm or whatever, you will not take any damage from that, which is fantastic because no one likes dying in a random dungeon or chasm just because you fell from a really high place. Also, whenever certain birds or dragons pick you up while they go flying, you won't take any damage whenever they finally drop you if you manage to get away from their from their drop. I I think this particular item could be ranked either lower or higher just because yeah, it doesn't have the greatest uh, set, but it's also kind of rare and it has three buffs uh, to your character. In terms of survivability, it's awesome usability you can use it everywhere and it's definitely more towards of an end game kind of thing unless you're lucky enough to find one early on so number nine in our list is going to be something that is absolutely end game and it is definitely absolutely wanted by myself and i'm sure many other people who know about this item it is this dragon's eye so this dragon eye when worn imbues the wearer with magical eyes similar to the dragon's immune to fire so this this one will completely make you immune to fire not just partially you're able to see through darkness so people won't be able to apply um, the darkness debuff on you and you're able to find treasure on the whim so i'm assuming just random loot will spawn for you um, or you're able to see um, treasure chest um, whenever you're in dungeons without having to be near them similar to how you sometimes can see monsters spawn in a distance and they're highlighted white i believe that's what that effect will do but you mainly want this due to the fire resistance and immune to darkness and it's easier to fight dragons that way the only problem is that it actually takes a lot a lot of resources and not to mention you need a dragon skull or a dragon head in order to craft it and that's why it's number nine on our list because it is so end game it is actually kind of ridiculous the ring of enchanted eyes is not so rough it's not so hard to get but having to craft four diamond swords and then getting four uh three ingot and then a dragon's head dragon's head's definitely higher end um uh, but i think it's one of the coolest items that you can possibly have okay so last but not least this is my personal most wanted item it is definitely one of those end game kind of things and you don't particularly need it because you can get away with using just about anything else in this game but i think it's one of the coolest items there is in this game and it is definitely definitely has a lot of usability and i think it is the strongest weapon in this game and that is on this right here the flame dragon bone halberg so this is the enchanted version of it but i would absolutely loved having one of these and you need a fire dragon blood and a dragon halberd to make it and so just by the nature of how hard it is to first of all come up with dragon bones and then the dragon blood that is that is why it is number 10 on the list it's not necessary for absolutely anything other than to destroy just about all your enemies yeah i mean that's just my personal favorite and that is why it's number 10 on the list not necessary because it's useful anywhere else in the game so if you guys enjoyed this list and you want to see more like it leave comment down below and what you'd like to see and if you disagree with any of the placement of the above items definitely leave a comment on where you think things should be ranked other than that guys i think that's all i have for you today i know i didn't cover a lot of items that are in this game and that's because well if you look there's over 97 pages of items and that is a lot of stuff to cover that um, well you're just gonna have to find out on your own uh, but if you'd like me to cover anything for you and I will be more than glad to do so with that said guys thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye